IQ Season 4, Episode 21, Hero. Who's it gonna be? Ooh, that was nice. Yeah, いつだって一体六。だったら、全然違うんだろうな。いや、いや、すごく複雑。いったい二じゃない。いつだって一体六。だったら、全然違うんだろうな。いや、いや、すごく複雑。いったい二じゃない。いつだって一体六。だったら、
All these flashbacks. It's a waste to not learn something new. So interesting. I don't know why I'm in this like friend nostalgic zone, but last episode I talked about how, how the newcomer, Kira, reminded me of a certain friend. Nishinoya in certain key ways reminds me of another friend. One of the things that friend said to me that always stuck with me, and I'm going to butcher the phrasing, but I remember the idea. It was that when it comes to people he cares about, if there's a problem, when it comes down to it, if he has to be the one to make a sacrifice, he will make the sacrifice because then there's no cost because he trusts himself to be able to withstand anything. And so if he's the only one sacrificing, there's no sacrifice in the name of the group, let's say. And while there's some parts of that that act concern to me because you don't want the people you care about to sacrifice for you either. There's something really beautiful about both the inner resilience and the strength that that takes. You know, the idea that I trust myself to be okay no matter what, and so I'll gladly take the hit. And the priority, which is the people you care about come first over what is immediately gratifying or useful for you. And I mean, it's not just words. He truly is an embodiment of that. That's what reminds me of him in Nishinoya. Nishinoya! <laughs> Nishinoya always willing to pick up the slack. A little bit of a verbal assist there. This sentimental synchronized attack. This feels great. It feels like we're we're, we're getting this. Just keep keep out of it, and we're good. That's huge. And credit to him too for not like having a, a meltdown, which is what I expected, which is what I would do in this situation. That's the power of having a, a group of teammates you just adore. Their opinion just means so much more. There you go, I got to be useful. <laughs> Different kind of waterworks. <laughs> Once again, Nishinoya and his, like, doing that for him, doing that for a teammate, in a sense, you know, thinking about his emotions instead of himself. Man, we're going just deep into so many people. Oh, I didn't realize it was them at first. They're so cute. They go way back, huh? He got up there for a little kid. Why do these kids have more hops than me? Thank god they changed their hairstyle, because <laughs> otherwise it's confusing enough already. I like how he became nice just despite his brother. <laughs> Whatever gets you there. Many roads, one path. I don't know exactly what it is, but I feel like part of it is, despite their feud and their rivalry, they get a lot of what they need from each other. The twins, despite their bickering, feel like each other's home base. My sister and I didn't always get along as kids, but looking back on it now, years later, there was something really important and formative for me, I think, as a person about spending so much time with her as a kid. We actually were just reminiscing about the fact that we didn't appreciate this certain era we had of life where we just spent a lot of time together. I've never had as much of a feeling of home warmth, let's say, as I did during that time. It just makes you more resilient. Having something to come back to, having just like a, a base is so important. It doesn't even have to be family or siblings necessarily. Like I just had that same thought with Karasuno. The fact that any of them can mess up and go to the sidelines and they, they just have this family and the fact that they have that at their disposal. It trumps the, the minor failures, it trumps the things that go wrong. It's a buffer or a baseline that you can bounce off of. Not exactly the home base I was referring to, but... With a flying jump kick, no less. Uh, maybe somebody should step in. No, no. All right, let them have at it. <laughs> Just back to normal. These two really know how to sibling. Imagine having a live-in rival. I'm still getting over the fact that Osamu, Osamu became the nice one just because his brother became a jerk first. Why does I feel like such a deep confession? 
I'm always wary of what happens after a flashback. It's, it's almost never good if it's on the rival team. He just hurt himself? That's really high praise in a show like Haikyuu where there's just a lot of amazing setters. Oh, he's fired up. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we haven't even begun to see Kagama in this match. Like, he's been so great already, but it feels like he's ramping up. He might love volleyball a smidge more than Atsumu. I feel like that backstory, the whole thing of it, culminated in the high five between the two brothers. I really felt that. This episode is kind of crazy in that, did we even play volleyball? There were like two points and the rest was just deep dives into various characters we're really going in which i love it was like two episodes worth so many characters got covered in a really satisfying way it's funny to see the twins backstory honestly i'm still not sure how i feel about atsumu i like him i guess more and more as i see more of him he can be a little bit grating as i said but i think maybe it's just a function of their brotherhood like i said they they kind of create a base for each other they're at one point they're kind of like i'll go this way you go that way and they end up balancing each other out and complimenting each other being sort of home base as siblings which honestly i think is is a real thing I mean, I'm the older sibling, so maybe it's less pronounced for me, but just in family in general and even in friend groups, I feel like to some extent people will will flow downhill, right? They will find ways where they can differentiate themselves and be distinct and be useful or have their own independence of character. This maybe is not the best example, but I think one way this applies for me is both my parents are musicians and I had an early interest in music, but I feel like there were just forces in my brain that pushed me away from it because I, I could never measure up to my parents in music. And there's this feeling of wanting to chart your own path, doing your own thing and if you find a niche where it's like oh I'm, I'm actually good at this and this is something that I can make a name for myself in that's interesting and unique at least for me that has a magnetic force but maybe that's a function of the level of contrarian that you are I just finished the show Succession and not to spoil anything but it reminds me of the son in the family who's like never gonna be his father and how that ends up manifesting in all sorts of bizarre behavior for all the kids in that show actually what intrigues me most about what's to come following this episode is what happens to Kageyama he's watching all this and he's admiring all this and he's been in the zone the whole game I don't think I've ever seen him be at this level though and we know who he is we know what he's capable of we know he has something next level he has other gears that i'm just waiting i'm waiting to see turned on 